Hey guys, our topic for today is chemical equilibrium basic. Hang on, I mean basics. So what is chemical equilibrium? Physically, it's when there are no more changes in concentration, but chemically, it's when the forward reaction rate equals the reverse reaction rate. To illustrate this, let's pretend we have two rooms, with the left side representing the forward reaction and the right side representing the reverse. And let's say there's five people in the right room and three people in the left room. Now, let's say that there are two people constantly moving from the right room to the left room, and two people also constantly moving from the left room to the right room. And though these people are constantly moving between the rooms, the amount of people in each room stays the same. So now that we know what equilibrium is, how do we know if a system is at equilibrium? Well, basically, if k is equal to q, which we'll get to in a minute, then the system is at equilibrium. So k is also known as the equilibrium constant which is basically the re ratio of the molarities and make sure it's a molarity of the products over the molarities make sure it's molarities of the reactants at equilibrium which is very important because Q is something different Q is the reaction quotient and this is different because it's not at equilibrium but it's calculated the same way as K so now you know a lot about equilibrium but there's one thing that teachers will most likely ask you on test and that's to calculate KC but wait, what is KC though? So, well, KC is just a fancy way of saying K, the equilibrium constant. And this just is one of those things teachers do to confuse students. So now let's pretend we have this reaction. A plus B reacts makes C plus D. And this system is at equilibrium. So to calculate KC or K or whatever your teacher is going to call it, use this equation. And you might want to plug in molarities instead of these pretend chemicals. So C times D over A times B. Or you could multiply the products and multiply the reactants and divide it like that. Or let's say A has a coefficient of 2. Then in the equation, raise A to the second power, or whatever the coefficient is, or D is a solid. So take it out of the equation. So that's because there are some things you will never include, but you should include gases. And you should also include aqueous solutions. But you should never include these things because it will mess up your results. You should never include pure liquids, so don't include that because I'll mess up your results, and don't include solids. So thanks for watching guys, hope you learned a lot, like and subscribe, please. Um, so we hope you ace.